This is Engelman Daisy. Engelman was a botanist. It came through Texas way back in the olden days and uh, identified a bunch of our plants and put his name on a couple of them that he hadn't seen before. Another name for this is Cutleaf Daisy. And uh, some of that name could be from the leaves. Let me get a leaf here. And you can see how serrated the leaves are. Or another reason for the, another name a reason for the name might be in the petals of the individual flowers. You can see how the flowers will curl back during the day. Uh, see if I can stretch one out here. But they curl back as the plant loses moisture during the day, and uh, they they curl they curl, and that's a uh, moisture retaining kind of uh, adaptation that this particular plant has. Again, the two names for this one, two common names, are Engelman Daisy and Cutleaf Daisy. This plant is Coastal Germander, and you can see the, the uh, flowers sort of come out the side of it. Of course, there's some more blooms that will be up there uh, at the top. This is in the mint family, and one of the identifying characteristics of the mint family is they have a square stem. Uh, it's not a round stem, but it's a square stem. All of the mints will have a square stem, and that's one of the ways you can identify them. This uh, particular germander uh, is called coast germander. Uh, it grows well up here on the high plains. Uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't grow that well down near the coast, so I don't know why it's called coast germander, but... Uh, that's what most of the wildflower books have it identified as. We found this ladybug here trying to pick the aphids or find some aphids or some sort of lunch off of this uh, Russian thistle here. Uh, you can see her right there. And uh, this is a Russian thistle. It's not quite out in bloom, but uh, once it does get into bloom, uh, there will be a lot of insects that will inhabit the uh, dense petals that come out of the thistle here and uh, it's a good forage plant for a lot of the insects that we have. I, I have difficulty finding a uh, thistle and looking at the bloom and not finding at least four or five different insects inside it. Uh, Russian thistle and uh, nice, uh, nice sharp pointed leaves on it. You don't want to run into it. This white flower here with the yellow centers is called rock daisy. Uh, probably because of its uh, characteristic or its uh, seemingly pre preference for rocky places. It's a, uh, a, a real nice, compact kind of a bouquet of flowers, and it'll be very striking out in the prairies and, of course, uh, would work well in wildflower plantings if you want to have a wildflower garden. Another name for this particular plant is Plains Blackfoot. Uh, most of the plants we have out here on the campus uh, are in the sunflower family and uh, are the aster family and of course this is no exception here. Uh, very striking brilliant white uh, flowers and they'll they'll maintain their color for uh, two or three two or three weeks almost a month here at the first of the spring. Okay this is a rock daisy or plains blackfoot. This is a gallardia Actually, it's called Fragrant Gallardia, or another name for it is Old Red Eye. Uh, Old Red Eye here, he will uh, start out very young with a plant like, uh, a flower like this, or maybe even uh, down here like this. Uh, it'll mature to where it has these uh, yellow uh, petals on the outside of it, and then as it gets older and older, it will make a little ball uh, a red ball here on the top of this long stem. You can see that the, the leaves are very far down here, are, are almost down to the ground. There's quite a ways down there. And uh, then uh, if, I, if we can get this one over here, uh, pretty soon that turns into uh, the seeds, and this will break apart and have the seeds there. Uh, well, that didn't break apart very well, but uh, that's where the seeds will, will come out of. Uh, of course, uh, let's do a little bit of reviewing. This plant here is an onion, a wild onion. It uh, definitely smells like an onion. If you were to uh, pluck off some of the stems here, 
and smell down there at the base, it will smell like onion. Uh, I dug one up just a minute ago, and this is the onion. You can see it has a bulb down here. That bulb is edible. The Indians used to eat it. Uh, they would make meals out of it, and uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, all of the flavor that you have in a large onion is packed into this little onion right here. They, uh, they are very powerful onions. Now, the onions that we have out here will actually show different colors. Uh, I guess they're different species or different subspecies. Over here on the right of that one, we've got one growing just a few feet away from it that's red or purple. Uh, these onions can be dug up and they can be transplanted and they will make a real nice border plant for your wildflower garden if uh, you're so inclined to do that. Uh, they, uh, again, the point that I'd like to make is that you can break off the stem and if it smells like an onion, it is an onion. Uh, we'll try to find some crow poison here in just a minute, which is uh, the flowers may look, look like this, but uh, or the plant will look a lot like this, but it is not an onion and it's toxic. Uh, so we'll uh, leave you with this uh, flower of with this uh, picture of the onions here. As we promised, we found some crow poison here. You can see that the plant looks a lot like the onion does, but uh, this one's actually toxic. Again, the definitive way to determine or to find out is to go ahead and, and pluck off one of the, the stems here and smell. If the base of it doesn't smell like an onion, if it doesn't have that distinctive onion smell, then it's not onion and uh, it can be toxic. Uh, the crow poison here uh, makes uh, uh, seeds. Here's some of the seeds off the crow poison. Uh, the plant grows from bulbs and also grows from seeds that uh, may be dispersed around the area. Uh, the flowers are a little bit larger than the onion, but until you see them right next to each other, it's, it gets a little bit more difficult to, to tell the difference. Uh, crow poison. Uh, if it doesn't smell like onion, don't eat it. This is woolly white. It's in the nightshade family. One of the ways that you can identify those plants that are in the nightshade family is to, uh, if you can see that star in the center of the plant there, the, the petal is all joined together and then it has this star in it. Uh, the next plant we'll look at will be a, a purple ground cherry and you'll see it has that distinctive star also will be in the nightshade family. Um, some of the common plants that we have in our garden are also in the nightshade family, the tomatoes and the potatoes, uh, as well as the silver leaf nightshade that uh, generally grows the weed in our gardens and of course in the, uh, in the fields. Uh, this is a woolly white, it's in the nightshade family. Purple ground cherry makes a real nice uh, a border plant, or not a border plant, but it will, will make a nice low growing plant in your wildflower garden if you uh, want to plant it. Uh, I can see the star in the center of this plant. I don't know if it shows up on the tape. Uh, these plants actually look better in real life. The, the flowers have got an iridescence to them. Uh, as I take photographs, that iridescence very rarely shows up on the pictures. Uh, this is a very hard uh, plant to get a real good picture of. But uh, purple ground cherry, it's in a nice shade family. And uh, you'll see it in disturbed areas. Indian bread root. Uh, the Indians actually dug up the tuber that's uh, down there under the ground and uh, ate it boiled. They ate it raw. They also uh, dried it and made a flour out of it to make their breads. Uh, you can see the, the leaf structure here looks a lot like the Texas blue bonnet that we're going to see next. The blue bonnet is a legume. This is also a legume. They put nitrogen back into the soil. Uh, this particular one has, uh, well on that one it has uh, six leaflets on the leaves. This one has seven here. But you can see that the, it's a very distinctive, uh, nice looking flower. Texas Blue Bonnet. This is a legume. Used to be, it's also called wolf plant because they, uh, they thought that it robbed the soil of nutrients. But actually it's a legume and it puts nitrogen back into the soil. 
it's a uh, you can see the P pods on it uh, the pods here that look just like little peas the uh, the blue bonnet of course is the, the state flower of Texas there are actually six species that are state flowers of Texas and this is just one of them this is the, the species called Texas blue bonnet this is Texas yellow star uh, it grows here in a get a little bit of moisture in this particular little ditch here on the side of the road uh, of course you can see uh, there's several different names for this one a Texas star or yellow star or you can put them all together and call it Texas yellow star the uh, ends of the petals can fade to white as they did in this one and then of course you'll have uh, the seeds that will come out in the center of the flower uh, like you have uh, right here uh, hopefully uh, you got to see all that but uh, the seeds will come out and of course the seeds will uh, plant real easily uh, and they come up real well from uh, seeds and uh, it's kind of a nice flower for your uh, wildflower garden if you're interested in growing one I'm going to start right here this is uh, Indian blanket or a fire wheel and of course the Indian blanket has a wonderful legend with it that uh, the chief's daughter one night wandered away from the camp and uh, these flowers grew up around her and uh, created a blanket there for her. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the old red eye in just a minute. The same family here is the, uh, as the Glardia, is the one we've already talked about. This is the old red eye again. And you can see it's dropped all of the yellow uh, petals that would be around the flower. They're both Gallardias. And of course the botanists came over and... As we move over here to the right, uh, or back over to the right now, we've got uh, another flower. It's called Weesatch Daisy, H-U-I-S-A-C-H-E. Uh, -E. And uh, again, it's a composite. There's several of them here. Here's one that has uh, sort of white around the edges as it gets a little bit older and here's another flower that's even a little bit older that you can see that it's uh, started going to the seed head uh, but it's uh, composites uh, have got the actual flowers in the center of the flower there this is bladder pod uh, it's in the uh, mustard family one of the characteristics of the mustard family is that they have they're flowers in the shape of a cross. Uh, the, the actual name of the family is Cruciferia, uh, Crusa for a cross. Bladder pod gets its name because of the seed pods, and you can see that the seed pods here actually make a round sort of uh, a bladder, if you would, and uh, they will pop once they get uh, mature and, and old and uh, harden up. They'll, they'll actually pop a little bit. Okay, so this one was a bladder pod. One we looked at a few minutes ago, this is the onion, but also right next to it right here is another one called the crow poison. Crow poison is also called false garlic, and it is not edible. But the onion, uh, which a lot of people confuse with that, is edible. You can see that the crow poison has the yellow in the center here, a little bit larger flower, and the onion, of course, is here. But when, the outs when you look at them, and they're not next to each other, sometimes you can get those confused real easily. Uh, just remember that the onion, if you, if you break off the stem, it's going to smell just like an onion. And the crow poison will not have that kind of a smell with it. Another verbena, it's a little bit smaller one, it's uh, called rose verbena. And again, you can see it's still got the little characteristic gingerbread man shape. Uh, let's see if I can isolate one of the flowers right here. Uh, you can see the gingerbread man shape there with the, the head and the legs and the little arm. And then right next to it, we've got a, uh, this is uh, Indian breadroot. It's in the same family as the uh, Texas blue bonnet. You can see from the leaves there that it has a palmate type leaf where all the little leaflets start out from the same center. Um, it's, um, the Indians actually dug up the tubers from this and they have a little potato kind of a tuber that they dry and make a flower and make some bread out of it. But it's a, uh, not a whole lot of them on the campus, but uh, we do have a few of them. Uh, Indian breadroot. 